Oh man. I just spoke at an event today and um, this cute girl, woman, she's 25, woman, everyone's a girl to me. Anyone that's younger than me is a girl. Um, <laughs> woman came up, she's graduated in her career and she's like, I want to be a business owner. So I'm thinking about starting a business. And I asked her a couple more follow-up questions just to really understand what her situation is. She's literally not tied down at all. She has like a rent payment. That's it. Cars paid for, no um, student loan, no husband, no kids. Like she's a free bird. You know, she can do whatever. And I said, have you ever thought of purchasing a business? And she's like, oh, no, no, no. That's too big. I said, do you understand that it's easier to buy a business than it is to start a business. And it hadn't even occurred to her um, that that would be the case because when you buy something that's existing, you have income coming off of that business and the bank will loan on, um, on that income, on the accounts receivable. Because she's female and young, you can also get an SBA loan to cover the difference. But that's mm -hmm. That's how I got I'm my first business. <laughs> but um, specific to real estate, um, my husband's in real estate, so I happen to know a lot about this. So many people are like, oh, I'm going to start with this $500,000 $500, duplex and just see how it goes. That's harder. That is harder than buying a $5 million building because in a $5 million building, you already have tenants, you already have history, you have every, this is what lenders want to see in this property performance. At a $500,000 um, duplex, you are literally going to pledge your house, your car, your firstborn, everything to get that $500,000 duplex. On a $5 million building, you may or may not have personal recourse on that loan. So therefore the risk is significantly mitigated in that situation. And I don't know why women in particular want to box themselves in to be small. You got to think big. I mean, there's no reason okay, I'm going to do this on the side or I'm going to do that. No, jump in. Now's the time. There is never going to be a better time than right now. That's great. That's great. So let me ask you, like, how do you use the law of attraction to like towards your career and everything? So that's, that's in the book too. And actually it's something that I talked about today. Um, so I was at a at a um, conference a couple weeks ago with my husband, who's in um, commercial real estate, like I said, and we were with all of the um, largest commercial property owners. We're all in Sun Valley together, in the in the nation. We're all together, and there was not a cosmetologist among them as their wives. There was not a partner that was not equal to the person there that was in real estate. Like attracts like. If you want to attract, you know, marry a doctor, you probably need some education. Um, same thing in, in business partners. Um, if you want to attract someone who hustles, you can't be... You know, this person that's waking up at 10 a.m. and going to the club all night. The hustler doesn't want to hang out with you. Like attracts like. And so, and the funny part about it is it's this vicious cycle is that you keep attracting and attracting and attracting people, more opportunities, more, um, more, uh, Opportunities for lack of, a, I don't have another synonym, synonym for that, but um, the more you put your energy out there, 
you put your desires out there, you put your intentions out there, you are going to get those reflected back to you. And that can be negative or positive, but you are going to get that reflected back. Yeah, yeah, I, I've experienced that myself too. So so besides the law of attraction, tell us some other tips to run a successful business and the systems that you, you know, would tell them to put in place to have it run without them. Because, you know, as a, a mom, you put your business together and then realized you have to have an exit strategy and you have to have things in place so you can free up your time and not always be the guy or in your case, the gal. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I think that is a common misconception. Um, If you have a business that doesn't, you know, can't run without you for a week, for two weeks or whatever, You don't have a business, you have a job. Mm -hmm. You gave yourself a job. Mm -hmm. Um, Ideally, you would have people in, so you have your systems in place, your SOPs, your standard operating procedures, and they're followed exactly. So the same thing is done every single time. Let's use McDonald's as an example. If I were to show up at McDonald's right this instant, I would know how to do absolutely everything because it's written in English and Spanish right in front of the stand or right in front of the um, area where you're working in. You take the bun, you put the pickles on. This is what the pickles look like at this exact thing. One squirt of ketchup, one squirt of mustard. So you get the same product every single time. If you go to a McDonald's in Michigan and McDonald's in California, it's going to taste the same because those systems have been um, standardized. So when you are a business owner, your optimal place is to be working on the business, not in the business. Okay, if you're working in the business, you have a job. I want you to think about a ladder, okay? So an employee would be on the, the lowest rung of the ladder. So they are literally selling their time for money. The second thing would be a self-employed person. So that's a person that like does nails, cuts hair, that type of thing. So like if my hair girl broke her hand, she'd be out of business, okay? The next level is a business owner, okay? So if you, excuse me, business operator. So that is you working in the business. That is you taking phone calls, you taking out the trash, that type of thing. Now there is a time and a season for that. Let me just tell you, I have taken out a lot of trash. I have pulled a lot of, you know, overnighters. I have slept in my office. There is a time and a season for that. But ideally, You want to get away from that by putting your systems in place. So then the next level would be a business owner. Okay, so that is someone who um, works on the business, not in the business. So you are the big picture thinker. You are exit strategy. You are the 10-year goals. You are the three-year picture, the 90-day rocks. You are giving that direction. You are George Washington crossing the Delaware pointing the way. Then the top level is an investor. And massive capital is the perfect example of this. So Warren Buffett is the largest shareholder in Coca-Cola. Does he show up to Coca-Cola every day? No, he does not. He invests the money and Coca-Cola does the work for him. Same thing with real estate, same thing with with, um, actually any other industry. The investor is the highest level. So you are not selling your time for money. You are selling your money for time. So what I mean by that is you are buying back your time. You don't, I'm not punching a clock. 
I am buying back my time with my family. I'm able to go on one month trips. I'm able to do all of these different things because I'm at the investor level. I'm not at the employee level. I'm not running my business day to day. You're above that. That's great. Yeah, that's amazing. Time is so important. So I know it's getting close to the time. So um, Heather, what does she build, she owns, she invests mean to you? Such a good question. I have two daughters and um, you really need to rely on yourself. You cannot you know, gone are the days where it's like, okay, you get married and you have a white picket fence and live happily ever after. And you're this stay at home mom and it's all rainbows and, and gumdrops. And, you know, that doesn't exist. Um, you get out of it, what you put into it. And I think that women, number one, having a seat at the table is extremely important. And if there is not room at that table, you make yourself a seat at that table. You scooch in. And then number two, to be in charge, to be empowered. Do you know how empowering it is to have your own money and to have your own investment strategies and to have your own thing going on where you don't have to ask permission to do this or, oh, I need some more money for that. It It's a level of confidence. And again, going back to that law of attraction, you are going to attract people that are in the same mindset that you are. You are going to attract those, those winners, those investors, and it's just going to spiral up. It's just going to get better. Now, the exact opposite is true too. If you're, you know, have, have a job and you're like, okay, well, I guess this is it for the rest of my life. You are going to find that all the people that you hang out with you're going to be spiraling down. You're going to be trading your time for money for the rest of your life. So in order to take control of that and make your trajectory go up, up and to the left, you need to invest. And so I think this is such a needed platform and kudos to you guys for putting this together. You're on mute. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Heather. Uh, this has been amazing. We are seeing all the comments on WhatsApp, Facebook. If you guys are not part of the groups, join us. Uh, we're going to go to questions. So feel free to raise your hand and mute yourself. And uh, while we go to to the next session. So please let us, uh, please share your uh, questions. And just for those really quick, while we start with questions, those who are in Houston, we have a mastermind this weekend. We're gonna share how to buy apartment buildings, everything that takes uh, to take down those large assets. So if you're in Houston, join us. And that's the only event that we have, but don't forget to show uh, merch for she. And uh, let's get back to the questions. So we have questions from Pastor yeah. Anthony. Let's yes, we do. Um, one of the questions in the chat was, Heather, what are your thoughts on leaders in a company who struggle to let go and focus on working on the business rather than getting caught up in the day-to-day -day operations. And then the next, it's a two-part question. And how do you um, think this impacts their ability to scale and lead effectively? So I'll let you answer those two. In I have a lot of strong opinions on that. <laughs> okay, so I am going to send Jasmine. Um, this is not an endorsement. This I don't get like get paid by these people or anything. This is a system that I use. It's EOS Entrepreneurs Operating System. And um I use it. I'm that mean mom, and like I make my kids set goals. So we have 90 day rocks. One, I mean, we have that we do the whole this system. We do EOS life and I do um, EOS. Um, so I do it personally and I do it professionally. So that's where I would start. Um, 
the problem is you don't have the right people in the right places. If you can't give up control of something, you don't trust that person to do it. If that is the case, you either have two problems. You have a square peg in a round hole or you just have the wrong person, the wrong fit. And in either way, in either case, off like a Band-Aid, off like a Band-Aid, slow to hire, quick to fire, or find out what they're actually good at and put them in that position. Um, in small companies, especially, you end up wearing a lot of hats. And um, sometimes they don't fit appropriately. So my biggest advice is EOS. I would, if I were to do it all over again, I would hire an implementer and I would do the whole system with them. I did not do that. It took a lot longer than, oh, oh it's right there in the, okay. I just Gino put it Lickman. in the chat. Gino Whitman, yeah. EOS. Yes, I've, I would. It's one of my mentors. <laughs> absolutely recommend that. And um, don't have all the confidence in the world like I did. And I self-implemented in a family business and um, it took a lot longer. <laughs> so pay the money and have someone implement it for you. So one of the follow-up questions was also, what tips would you give to someone who is a partner or holds a high ranking leadership position in navigating the challenge? Navigating the challenge of, of being hands off. Yeah, I think I think from the it sounds like the partner, you know, there's two people in a partnership and take yourself off mute if you um want to clarify what I'm reading here, but um uh yeah, it sounds like they're trying to get to uh how one partner handles another one who isn't willing to make the the decision to move from the day-to-day -to, -day to the strategy. Now, I don't know anything about this partner. It could be a family member. It could be, you know, a childhood friend, whatever, that type of thing. Um, you can only control yourself. So you've got a couple options. Um, number one would be the old, you know, Solomon split it down the middle and go your separate ways, have them absorb you. Um, or work together. I mean, that you really have, I guess, three options. Um, so split it. Um, either you buy out the partner, the partner buys out you, or you learn to work together. And if you learn to work together, I would highly recommend some sort of um, consultant or an outside person coming in and working on that relationship prior to having these succession plannings. Let me give you an example. Um, so as was stated, I own the company with three of my brothers. And um, three of us are married, have kids, you know, bunch of stuff going on, this, that, the other, you know, it's just life's crazy right now. And then I have one brother who is single. And um, when we're talking about succession planning, he also has um, severe anxiety, like diagnosed severe anxiety. And when we talk about succession planning, I mean, my other two brothers and I are like, great, this is gonna be fabulous. You know, here's our five-year goal. Here's our 10-year here. When someone comes to us with this number, no matter what, we are out, we are done. We have so many different things on our plate. This would be great. And my older brother's entire identity is wrapped up in this business. All of his best friends work there. He gets the accolades. He has nothing else. He doesn't have a girlfriend. He doesn't, he's just the single guy. And we have to take that into account. Um, when, so, like I said, fostering my family relationships is my number two. And we had an offer on the business of one of our companies um, a couple years ago. And I was like, sell, done. 
I'm going to go hop into this. We're going to do, I mean, I had the money spent. Let me just tell you, like I was done and we had to stay, take a step back. And he was having a severe, um, I would call it a prolonged panic attack because it wasn't just like a day. It was like two months. Like we couldn't get him under control. And, um, we had to decide as a family, you know, should we keep in conversation or keep my brother alive? You know, there were, there were two choices to go down and it wasn't a choice because I know that's my number two anchor. And I know my other two brothers, um, feel very similarly. And so we decided to take a step back, walk away from that offer and we helped my brother get on some different medication. He um, started going to therapy um, more regularly and was able to talk out what he was so fearful of and having this anxiety. And we were able to, number one, not just salvage the relationship, but improve the relationship on that terrible experience. <laughs> and then... Um, Recently, we had another offer on, on a different business. And it's funny because the entire outcome is different. Now he can see the forest for the trees. Now he has a plan as to what he would do if we exited that business. He's going to invest in this business. He can see the, the way forward. Um, but that relationship was hit with him was paramount. And so we walked away from it. Now, Mine did have a happy ending because I have a better offer right now. Um, actually, almost double what the offer was three years ago. But it doesn't always work out that way. And we really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing no your your wonderful uh, information about just how to how to work with each other and and how to build an awesome business. Thanks for having me.